Hello everybody, Killen was in here, and today I will be doing with Deku was reborn as a slime, part 26. So in the last part, I just basically covered the final exams arc, and well, the fight between Deku, Bakugo, and All Might. Also, by the way, Kirishima did pass the final exams. And if you want to know how, just leave a comment in this video, and I'll make a video about, well, how he passed the exam. So, continuing the story, it would have been like 2 or 3 days after the final exams, as Deku would have gotten a, well, mail. Him finding 2 tickets to I Island in the letter. Also, there is a, you know, that device that gives you a hologram? Yeah, that thing. It's basically telling Deku that because he won the sports festival, he gets two tickets to I Island. And that he can bring whoever he wants with him. As the first person that Deku thought of is, well, his mom. Him going to her room and asking if she can go to I Island with him, with Inko basically telling Deku that that day she has work to do, so yeah, she couldn't go to I Island with him. Deku being disappointed would just go out of her room and think of another person to find and go to I Island with him, the person being Kirishima. Since Bakugo at that time is, well, busy doing stuff. Deku asking Kirishima if he would like to go to I Island with him, but Kirishima would just say that he has already been invited by All Might, so he would have to reject Deku's offer. Deku just thinking, okay I know I shouldn't disturb Kachan like right now, but I really want to know what he is always doing at this time. Yeah, screw it. Him, well, picking up his phone and calling Bakugo. With Bakugo answering the call and yelling at Deku saying, What the frick do you want? Oh, hi Kachan, I just wanted to ask you if you would like to go to I Island with me. Wait, seriously? Yeah, I got two tickets to I Island for winning the sports festival. So, do you want to come? I'll reply to you later, Deku. I thought I told you I have stuff to do at this time. Yeah, actually, Kachan, what do you actually do at this time? Simple, one word, sleep. Seriously, it's like 4 p.m. Why in the world are you sleeping at 4 p.m.? Well, Deku, Unlike somebody that doesn't need to sleep, I am a human, and I need to sleep. Hmm, fair point. So are you done talking, Deku? Pretty much. As Bakugo would immediately end the call. Now, after a few days, it would have been the day that Deku and Bakugo would have to, well, go to I Island. Both of them... Well, getting on a plane and flying to I Island. I believe that's what they took to I Island, but if I was wrong, just tell me in the comments. Now, after a few, like, hours, they would arrive at I Island. Both of them basically visiting the attractions and looking at the scenery. With Bakugo being a bit upset since he didn't get to, well, explode. As he would find the, you know, that villain attraction. Him immediately telling Deku that he wants to go and explode some robots. Deku just basically allowing Bakugo to do it since once Bakugo wants something, Nothing can stop him from getting that thing. With the, well, attraction starting. 
Bakugo just basically exploding every robot that's in his sight. Him getting 8 seconds flat. As while Bakugo was doing that attraction, Kirishima would have ran up to Deku. Him basically asking Deku who did he bring with him to I Island. Deku just pointing in the well attraction. Kirishima immediately seeing and well hearing Bakugo's explosions. As we will time skip to when it is time for the party. Bakugo and Deku both being in a well suit and meeting up with the others. Them finding out that the party was attacked by a bunch of villains. Deku seeing this would have thought, Damn it, now I'm regretting not telling Phantom to come here. And while Deku was thinking that, the rest of the group would have been trying to form some sort of plan. And in the end, their plan would have been the entire group going to the top floor and resetting the security system. After that, Deku would have used Fog Communication to tell All Might about their plan. All Might agreeing with their plan, since 1. He can't do anything to stop them. 2. He knows that Deku can protect all of them as they would start to use the stairs. Them going up the stairs until they found a, well, wall cutting them off from the rest of the stairs. But before Bakugo can explode the entire wall, Mieta would have, well, accidentally opened the door. Deku thinking, well, looks like we will have to fight our way through. Them running out of the stairs, since they know that the villains would just, you know, trap them in the same floor and inside the stairs room. So, yeah. Them running out of the corridor and into a giant garden. Everybody beginning to hide since they don't want to fight villains. But just as they thought that, the villains would have showed up. Everybody hoping that they would not notice them. Deku just basically telling them that they will notice them in the end since they do need to get out of here. So they might as well send someone out to distract them. With Bakugo volunteering to go and distract them since he is itching for a fight. But before he can go out and fight those two villains, he would have been stopped by Ida. Him telling everyone that it is illegal to use their quirks. Bakugo just saying, Don't worry, Four Eyes, I won't use my quirk. Everybody telling Bakugo that he is going to be killed if he is, you know, like that. Him just saying, don't worry, I'll be fine, right, Deku? Do you seriously want me to do this? Yes, fine, here, take these. Deku creating one magic bracelet and one wind gunnet. Deku giving these to Bakugo. But before Bakugo can take those two items, Deku would have said, only if you promise me that you will not let your guard down. Bakugo saying, Of course I won't let my guard down. This is not training. It is life or death. Good. As Bakugo would have worn both of those magic items. Him walking out of the bushes and facing those two villains. The others being confused as to what Deku just gave Bakugo. Deku just telling them that it is a long story. Now back over with Bakugo, he just, well, walked in front of those two villains. Him saying, 
You know, you two look very ugly. Those two villains being confused and, well, pissed off. Them activating their quirks and attacking Bakugo. But before they could, well, touch Bakugo, they would have stopped. Bakugo saying, You know, you guys are not very smart. Did you really think I would come out to you guys, irritate you, and pick a fight with you without a plan? You guys are so stupid. Him putting his left hand in front of him and saying, Try not to die, villains. As a wave of fire would shoot out from Bakugo's left hand. It shocking everyone. Well, except for Kirishima and Deku. Everybody looking at them and, well, asking the same question. How in the world is Bakugo using fire? Deku saying, I told you, it's a long story. As inside the flame, the skinnier Vin would just, well, jump out of the flame and attack Bakugo. This surprising Bakugo but, well, he didn't let his guard down, so he was able to get away from the villain using, you know, the wing gunnet. With the other villain coming out of the flame unharmed as well, as both of them would start to rush at Bakugo. Bakugo smiling as he would rush in towards those two villains as well, them starting to fight each other. Bakugo firing multiple fireballs at the skinnier villain while using his wing gauntlet to stop the fatter villain in place. With the skinnier villain able to get closer and closer towards Bakugo, him jumping straight towards Bakugo and trying to, well, punch him, which Bakugo would have saw and he would have used his wing gauntlet to pull in the fatter villain, this getting in the way of the skinny villain, both of them smashing into each other. But actually, it is Bakugo that made both of them smash into each other, but you know what I mean. While this was happening, Deku and the others would have went around the fight and well, try to find a way to get out of that floor. Them finding a trap door in the ceiling. With Melissa explaining that that trap door leads to the, well, maintenance room. But it can only be accessed from the inside. And before the others can think of a plan to open that trap door, Deku would have just well, stretch his arm, or should I say his slime, towards that trapdoor. And, well, opening that trapdoor, as well as making his slime into a staircase. Him saying, ladies first, Melissa being shocked since he didn't know that Deku is a slime. As the group would just walk up the stairs and into the maintenance room. But before Deku goes through the trapdoor, he would have used fog communication and told Bakugo, Hey Kachan, are you done? Because we're leaving. Yeah, I'll be done in a moment Deku, give me a sec. Him turning back to the two villains and saying, Well, looks like playtime is over. Those two villains being confused as they would be immediately knocked out. With Bakugo basically flying towards Deku. And if you are wondering how, he used his wing gauntlet. Now, after everybody went through that trapdoor, they would have been met by a lot of robots. You know, those security robots. And whenever Deku saw those security robots, he would have immediately used gluttony. Him eating every robot that is, well, in his sight. But before he can eat more, Melissa would have told him that 
the room they are in is, well, the server room. Her busily explaining to Deku that they cannot afford to damage the servers there. Deku understanding and stop using gluttony. Him telling Kirishima and Bakugo to lead the way and, well, take charge. Him also giving Kirishima a wing gauntlet and a magic bracelet. Deku also telling everybody that he will stay behind and hold off all of those security robots, since there is a lot. And I mean a lot. As they would have listened to Deku, since Deku is the most powerful and the most capable out of the entire group. Them finding another way up the tower. And after climbing up the tower and, well, fighting their way through, they would have reached the top floor. Them finding another henchman there. You know, the one with a sword quirk. But he would have been easily taken care of by, you know, the entire group since there is like a lot of them. After taking care of that guy, they would have went into the room to find that David is handing over a device, which is the quirk enhancing device, to Wolfram. Everybody rushing in to try and stop the villains. But before they can get in Wolfram's way, he would have used his metal manipulation to hold everybody off while he takes David to the helipad and get out of that island. Him also ordering his subordinates to go and restrain all of those kids. As he would have left that room and going up to the helipad. But just as Wolfram left that room, Bakugo would have immediately exploded with fire. Him melting those metal objects that are restraining him and immediately going out and fight those subordinates of Wolfram. Kirishima seeing Bakugo just did that, he would have did the same but instead of using fire, he would have used a smash. Him going around and freeing his friends while Bakugo is holding the other villains off. After freeing everybody, Todoroki would have told Kirishima and Bakugo that they need to get to the rooftop and stop that villain boss, and that he and the rest of the group can handle those villains that Wolfram left behind. Kirishima thanking Todoroki as he would have left with Bakugo and went up the stairs to fight Wolfram. Them arriving at the rooftop to find that the helicopter had just arrived. Them seeing Wolfram is about to get in the helicopter. But before Wolfram can actually get in the helicopter, Bakugo would have used his wing gauntlet to pull both David and Wolfram towards himself. As while Bakugo was doing that, Kirishima would have rushed in, him trying to save David while trying to also attack Wolfram. Him picking up David and also kicking Wolfram in the face as he would have just rushed back towards Bakugo, him putting down David as he would get back into his stance, him getting ready to fight Wolfram. And while Wolfram was trying to recover from Kirishima's kick, Bakugo would have started to chant or should I say use a magic spell, as he would fire a giant wave of fire which looks to be like a dragon. Him yelling, Blazing Dragon. Wolfram, seeing that there is a giant wave of fire going towards him, he would have immediately used his quirk to block the attack with, you know, metal. This not being very effective since the metal is being melted by Bakugo's attack. Wolfram, seeing this, would have immediately jumped out of the way, as the metal wall he just created would have been melted, well, melt through, with Bakugo's attack 
going straight through that metal wall. And as Wolfram jumped off the way, Kirishima would have rushed in again and tried to land a smash straight into Wolfram's face, with Wolfram immediately using metal to try and stop Kirishima in his tracks. Him doing so and thinking that he's safe for like 2 seconds. But to his surprise, Bakugo's attack is, well, turning direction. It turning 180 degrees and going straight towards Wolfram's back. Wolfram feeling something hot coming towards him, he would have turned back to see Bakugo's attack. As he would immediately manipulate the metal around Kirishima and throw Kirishima in front of himself, basically using Kirishima as a meat shield. Kirishima being hit by Bakugo's attack, as Wolfram would have ran out of the way and him picking up the suitcase which has the quirk enhancing device in it and making a dash for the helicopter, him trying to, you know, get away. Bakugo knowing that Wolfram is trying to escape, he would have tried to use his wind gunnet again. But before he can use it, Wolfram would have pointed a gun at David, him pulling the trigger. Bakugo knowing that he has two choices. One, save David and let Wolfram escape. Two, stop Wolfram from escaping but injuring David in the process. Him not knowing what to do, as he would have just tried to save David. Him stopping the bullet that's going straight for David's chest, with the bullet stopping only an inch from David's chest. Basically an inch in front of David's chest. Bakugo being relieved that he actually stopped a bullet, but his relief would have been well shot down from the sky as he feels a sharp pain in his left leg, him looking down to see a bullet wound, or should I say a hole through his entire leg, Bakugo grabbing his left leg and shouting out in pain, and over with Kirishima, he would have hardened his entire body, and also use some wind to cover his, you know, body as well. Him avoiding physical contact with Bakugo's attack, but he would have still be hurt by the high temperature of that attack, and he is currently trying to recover from that, well, experience. Now, while all of those are happening, Todoroki and the others would have already restrained the villain that is, well, left behind by Wolfram. As Melissa is currently trying to hack into the system and disable the security system. Now, back on the rooftop, Wolfram would have just got into his helicopter as it is starting to move away from the rooftop of that tower. Both Kirishima and Bakugo would have looked up and tried to stop Wolfram from getting away from the tower. Them using their wind gunnets to try and stop the helicopter from moving at all. Wolfram being annoyed would have grabbed another gun and start to fire at both Kirishima and Bakugo. With Kirishima hardening his body into his hardest or should I say, he would have used his unbreakable mode to try and stop the bullet from going through his body. Him also using his magic bracelet to use magic. Kirishima using it to create multiple wind daggers and trying to use those daggers to protect Bakugo from those, you know, bullets. This actually working and protecting Bakugo from getting hit by bullets, while Kirishima is being pumped full of bullets, but since he is in his unbreakable mode, those bullets cannot penetrate him, but they still hurt. This annoying Wolfram even more, him going back in the helicopter and trying to find another weapon, him finding a grenade launcher, as he would have fired every single round of grenade towards Kirishima since he is basically not protected. 
Well, he is using his quirk, but you know what I mean. As they would have hit Kirishima in the face and the chest as well, them exploding on impact, with Kirishima being sent flying by the force of the explosion. This basically making Kirishima go out of focus, and since both stopping the helicopter and continuously moving those wind daggers to stop the bullets from hitting Bakugo needs focus, they basically stopped. With Ren feeling that the helicopter can move a bit more, he would have grabbed his handgun and fired at Bakugo as well. This hitting Bakugo in his right shoulder and his left arm, and making Bakugo go out of focus as well. As the helicopter is able to move again, Wolfram immediately telling the pilot to, you know, fly them away from the island. But before they could fly away, this is when a bolt of black lightning would have struck from the sky, this hitting the helicopter and sending it crashing down back onto the roof, or should I say the helipad. Bakugo looking back up to see Deku extending his hand and saying, You did well, Kachan. Leave the rest to me. Bakugo taking Deku's hand and feeling his wounds starting to close and, well, heal back to full health. After this, Deku would have walked over to Kirishima as well, him extending his hand and healing Kirishima back to full health. Deku helping Kirishima back up to his feet, with Bakugo walking forwards and towards Deku and saying, What the hell took you so long, Deku? Well, actually, it didn't take me that long, but I just didn't want to steal your glory. As this is when Wolfram, wearing the quirk enhancing device in his head, or should I say on his head, and yelling, I'm not done yet, kid. Him immediately creating a tower of metal, and starting to rip apart the rooftop that they're on. Deku just saying, go on, why don't you go higher? Wolfram being confused. Deku just saying, don't you remember what I just did to you? Wolfram immediately realizing what he just did, as another bolt of black lightning struck down from the sky and electrocuting Wolfram. After being electrocuted, Wolfram would have been, well, still conscious. He would have tried to attack everybody again, him firing multiple spikes of metal towards them. But Deku would have just used gluttony to eat those metal spikes. Him saying, sorry villain, but you lost when you first attack my friends. As Deku would have put his hand on the ground, him again electrifying Wolfram, but this time Wolfram would have jumped out of his metal tower. And just as he did that, both Kirishima and Bakugo would have jumped straight towards Wolfram, them flying in and punching him square in the face. Kirishima using 100% of one for all, also using unbreakable mode, while Bakugo has gathered all of his sweat and moved them into his, well, left hand, or should I say left fist, him using that fist to punch Wolfram in the face with his sweat exploding on impact, basically throwing a explosive punch. This sending Wolfram flying up into the sky, as Deku would have fired another bolt of black lightning from the sky, this hitting Wolfram and sending him back onto the helipad. Now, this is when All Might would have arrived, him arriving only to see Deku, Bakugo, and Kirishima standing there with the villain boss, or Wolfram, on the ground unconscious as the rest of the movie would have been, well, the same. And that will be the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. That will be amazing, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!